Hey, how y'all doing? This is Mongo Slade. And today we're going to talk about Lashley. Lashley has been booked like a world beater, a world breaker for the last month and a half. Since he lost to, to Drew, Drew McIntyre at Backlash. I don't think he's lost a match since. Not a one-on-one -on -one match. I don't believe he's lost one of those. But I think he's hasn't lost anything since. I mean, he's just been mauling guys. And, you know, he's beaten some of the same guys multiple times. But he's just been mauling guys. He tapped out Jeff Hardy like four or five times already. And that's the problem here. Is that we got Lashley. Indestructible, seemingly. World beater. Unbreakable. No challengers whatsoever. When was the last time Bobby Lashley defended the United States Championship? I don't know. I have no idea. I dare not even look that up. Because it's probably going to be like September. Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's probably going to be in September. Or early November. But it's been forever. Since he defended the United States Championship. And that's the really bizarre thing is that. They have booked Lashley to be very good. Like he's awesome. But. He hasn't defended the title at all. And you know what the worst thing about it. It's not even that he hasn't defended the title. It's that. There have been no challengers whatsoever, even put in place. There isn't even anyone in a position to challenge him for the title. They, nobody cares about the U.S. title. Nobody cares. WWE doesn't care. Lashley, it wasn't until Lashley mentioned it. When he mentioned it in the promo, the Hurt Business promo on Raw, where he's like, there's not a man alive that can take this from me. I was like, oh shit, he is the U.S. champion. Oh shit, the, the, the Hurt Business got two-thirds of the titles in this motherfucker. You know, like, whoa, they dominating. You know, okay, cool. But wait a minute, there's nobody, there's no tournament going on to, to see who's going to face Lashley. There's no battle royals. Nobody has any momentum. Like, because of the crazy, the way that they book things, which is basically baby faces get beat up and... That's pretty much it. They just get beat up and nobody comes to save them. Nobody does anything. I don't want to go. I don't want to go down that road. I know I've said enough of that. You tired of hearing me say that baby faces need to be saved or somebody needs to do something at some point in time. But there's nobody. You know, Seamus is a baby face now. He doesn't want to fight Lashley. Keith Lee is a baby face, has no interest in fighting Lashley. <clears throat> they also seem to have no interest in fighting Drew McIntyre for the title. You know, there's other heels. On the roster, no interest in fighting Lashley for the title. Matt Riddle, no interest in fighting Lashley for the title. Jeff Hardy, no interest in fighting Lashley for the title. Ricochet is in, in a feud with uh, Retribution. None of them are in, are interested in, with the United States title. Nobody is interested in the United States Championship. Nobody. Everybody seems to be doing something else. And it's like, that's such a strange thing for you to have two strong champions, two strong champions, two champions that are very strong in McIntyre and Lashley. And for you to essentially have no challengers for either one of them. This episode of Raw did nothing for Lashley or for McIntyre. You know, it was just for McIntyre. It's just him being surrounded by people. He beat up every week. Anyway, you know, he beat up the Miz and John Morrison every single fucking week. And then you worry why the ratings go down. It's like, there's no drama. There's no story. There's no mystery. There's no questions. So why the fuck should anybody tune in and watch him beat up the Miz again? Who wants to keep seeing that? Like, no, it's, it's not interesting. But no, you, you could have had an opportunity with Lashley. Now, you got Lashley with this stable. This badass dude who's badass by himself. And he's surrounded by these other guys. You have a, a tremendous story potential there with Lashley. Tremendous story potential there. You know, even if it was somebody like Keith Lee who has to fight the Hurt Business by himself. You know, that would have been cool. You know, like he's got to, you know, stare down, you know, MVP's a little bit older. You know, he's not, maybe not in the right frame of mind to be fighting Keith Lee, but that's something for Keith Lee to do. Shelton is also a little bit older, but he's still in shape. He could tangle with Keith Lee. Cedric is a little small, but the youngest can really get in there and tear it up with Keith Lee. And then you got Lashley, who can match Lee, strength for strength, power for power. That could be great stuff. Great stuff where you have Keith Lee staring down the Hurt Business and like, you know, 
what are y'all going to do? Y'all going to do with this fella? You know, now I know I said it before in one of my very first videos, one of my very first important videos I made is that you don't put mid card titles on giants. It's a death knell for them. You put a mid card title on a giant, you can almost guarantee they aren't going anywhere. You know, I, I can almost guarantee it. I knew Ryback wasn't going to be the WWE champion when he became the Intercontinental champion. I knew that was it for him. It's just something about that. It's like, I forget who said it. I believe it might have been Cornette or it might have been uh, somebody like that. But they said, like, you don't typically put titles on people that you can't get off of them. You know, because if you had a giant, you don't want to get them beat. So you don't put belts on them. That's why Andre never won belts. Because you don't want to beat Andre. So you don't put any belts on him. Undertaker never won any kind of a title. How are you going to get it off of him? You know what I'm saying? So those are those are the things that I think about. Uh, Lashley, he's gone through the ringer a little bit. You know, he's been beaten by smaller guys. He's kind of a giant. He's still a giant. He's a little bit older, though. Um, him holding that belt is important. I think it's a really good spot for him. You know, I wouldn't necessarily have him with it. I also wouldn't necessarily give it to Keith Lee. I would really most likely want to have the U.S. title in the retribution feud with Ricochet and Mustafa Ali. I would actually rather for that title be over there doing with them. But Lashley's got it. That's fine. Why isn't Ricochet trying to get that belt? And then Rick, Retribution trying to stop him from winning it because Mustafa Ali wants it. Or why is Matt Riddle and Jeff Hardy a tag team? You know, why isn't either one of them trying to win a singles title? You know, like, and then they lost. So, like, they lost to, like, MVP and, and Lashley. So, it's like, they're not even going in the tag team ranks. So, it's not, that doesn't even make sense. So, like, we, we really got nothing going here for the U.S. title. And there's no steam behind the championship at all in, either. Especially when you compare it to the Intercontinental title, how they book an Intercontinental title on SmackDown. And that's really what makes it, look really bad. That's what makes Raw look bad. It's the fact that SmackDown has something for everything on the show. At least most of the things on the show. They're, they're, the fucking Riot Squad have a storyline on SmackDown. You know, they're fighting Billy Kay and this revolving uh, door of tag team partners who is likely going to be in Chelsea Green or somebody that would be bringing up from NXT. But you don't on Raw. You don't have any of that stuff. Over sixty percent of the roster is not involved in anything. They're just kind of there, or they're doing the same things every single week, every single week, every single week, and not progressing. Stories moving at a glacial pace, a tortoise-like pace, a slug-like pace. You know where you have to go through this fifteen, twenty-minute match to get one thing to happen. You know, like. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. It's not going to work. Lastly, you need some opponents. You need to just take one week. Just take one week and say this entire episode of Raw is going to be dedicated to the U.S. title. We're going to do a one-night tournament. All of these different people are going to be in it. You know, there's usually, what, six or seven matches on Raw. You know, make some of them shorter than others. You know, make a one-night tournament and then build it to another match. The next week. Something simple as that. I mean, you got six weeks between now and the Royal Rumble. You mean to tell me you can't put together a tournament that can last through that time just so Bobby Lashley can have an opponent at the Royal Rumble? Like, how hard would that be? Wouldn't be hard at all. The only thing is they just don't have the 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 interest in doing it. Like, I don't understand why they have no interest in making their show interesting. Anything that could possibly make the show interesting, they refuse to do it. They haven't done a battle royal. They won't do a tournament. They won't do a beat the clock sprint. They won't do anything on this fucking show to make it interesting. Nothing. Especially with this title. They won't do a fucking thing. Not a fucking thing. And that's the thing that infuriates me more than anything. It's not that, well, they need to just retire. No, that's low IQ thinking. My thing is, it ain't the fact that they, they, they don't know what they're doing, that they're out of touch. It's the fact that they don't want to do anything. That's the problem. Hell, they set a fucking motherfucker on fire at TLC. You can't tell me they're not thinking about stuff. Okay, they're, they're thinking about things. They just don't fucking do them. They just say, well, we got, we got to write 52 weeks of TV. We're going to bullshit through some of these weeks. And then they're they bu bullshitting through 45 weeks out of the fucking year. No. You got this guy walking around with this belt. 
And it doesn't mean anything because nobody wanted to fight him. He's like a fucking boxer at this point. It's like he's the IWBF uh, heavyweight champion. It's like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> like, who cares if you have a title if nobody wants it? But that's just me, man. I love Lashley. I wish that they could do something simple with Lashley. Like, just put him in a storyline for the title. Hey, I want to challenge you for the U.S. title. You probably don't want to do that. I'm going to hurt you. Eh, I think I want to. Well, you got to beat MVP first. Okay, beat MVP first. Next week, you got to beat Shelton first. Okay, I'll beat Shelton. Next week, you got to beat Cedric. Okay, I'll beat Cedric. Okay, now, that's three weeks of TV. That's three weeks of TV. Right there. That's three weeks of TV booked. Each member of the Hurt Business against this guy. And then, of course, you can beat him up after the fact if you want. You know, if that makes you feel better. If you got to get your heat back. Beat the guy up. But give him the fucking match. Give him the fucking win. And then that's it. How hard is that? It doesn't take rocket science. You know? Whatever. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Um, like this video. Uh, share this video. Subscribe to this channel. I thank you guys a lot. Um, take the $1 challenge or take the challenge and send me money. Thank you very much. And I'll talk to you guys later. Appreciate it. Peace.